with the decision made by Traffic and Parking Commission. You may appeal the decision by filing a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chantry or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of entry and the Commission's decisions. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Uh, do I have a motion for the approval of today's agenda? I so move. Second. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes from the meeting of March the 9th, 2015. Do I have a... I so move. To first and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Approval of the consent agenda. <laughs> Items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless the member of the audience or the commission request that the items be removed from the consent agenda. The rules on the public hearing, please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Each person representing will be expected to offer new information that has not been made previously. Once the public hearing has been uh, closed, no additional comments will be heard unless the public hearing is officially opened. Now on the consent agenda, these will be uh, hand votes. Is anyone on the commission that would like any of these pulled or discussed? Okay. All right, <clears throat> proposal number 2015M001 AB001, a request to abandon alley number 766 from Tillman Lane to alley number 767 from Porter Road to Powers Avenue easements and utilities to be abandoned and relocated. Requested by Little John Engineering Associates, applicant John G. and Mildred S. Uh, I guess that's Colove uh, and Josephine. They are the property owners. Proposal number 2015M. 007AB001, a request to abandon an unimproved uh, portion of the Forshee Place right away from Linwood Boulevard to Harpeth Hills. Easement and utilities will be retained on properties located at 4512, 4515 Harpeth Hills Drive and 912 and 914 Linwood Boulevard, requested by Chandelier Development, applicant various property owners. Number three, proposal number 2015-008-AB-001, a request to abandon a portion of Mowry Street right away easement and utilities to be abandoned and a request to authorize the execution of a quick claim deed to convey any interest uh, the Metropolitan Government proposes in the right of way and that no and and would not already be extinguished by the in a affordman affordman <laughs> excuse me a foreman mission abandonment on the property located at 22 to Second Avenue South, requested by Grisham Smith and Partners, applicant L. Turner, trustee owner. Number four, proposal number 2015M009AB001, a request to abandon a portion of the right of way from Woodmont Boulevard to Graybar Lane easement utilities and greenway to be retained. On properties located at 1808 and 1900 Gray Bar Lane and 1921 and 2001 Woodmont Boulevard, requested by Walter Davison and Associates, applicant various property owners. Number five, a proposal number 2015M 010AB001, a request to abandon a portion of Wood Fork Avenue. Wood Folk Avenue, a portion of alley number 1089, and a portion of an unnumbered alley of right-of-way easements and utilities to be retained. 
on various properties located uh, 680 feet west of Brick Church Pike, requested by Hawkins Development Company applicant, Tennessee Processing Center, LLC owner. Uh, this is all the items on the consent agenda. These will have to be hand vote. Do I have a motion? Is number six on the consent agenda? No, that's resolution. Well, that's also a consent item, but you can split it off in hand vote and regular vote if you'd like. Okay, but there are also you want, you want to do number six, too? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let's split it off. Yeah. That's All fine. right, they want to split it off. All right, do I have a motion on the consent agenda one through five? I so move. Have a first. Second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. 100%. Thank you. All right, resolution number 0415. Uh, this is the one you want to take separately, right? Yeah. Is that what you want? So we need to make a motion to actually take that separately, right? Okay. Yeah, it would probably be better. Okay. To remove it from the yeah. consent agenda. Ma'am. So, we. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it, it would be maybe a little better to go ahead and make a formal motion to remove that from the consent agenda. Okay. So, I'd like to make a motion. Second. <laughs> Have a first and a second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Glad we got your approval. All right, this will be a voice vote. Re uh, resolution number 0415, authorize a pra uh, traffic signal at O'Hicker Boulevard and Heritage Park Drive. Signal warranted. Did you, anyone want to speak on that, Chip? Or did anybody pull no, that No, it's off? a warranted signal, and we recommend installation. Okay. Staff recommends approval. Do I have a motion? I so move. First. Second. Second. Um, vote on all of these all at once. Okay, these will be a voice vote now. But we've got. Uh, uh, because there's a couple we know we want to pull. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and um, then you could either go through them individually like you were starting to do because you removed the whole item from the consent agenda or the whole number six um, or you could um, pass several of them that are non-objectionable collectively and then just take the in individually the ones that were <coughs> of concern. Okay, you want me to just skip over the ones they want to debate about? We'll talk about or read them all. Um, it might be cleaner to just do them individually. Do them individually? Yes. Okay. 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 All right. Well, with that, then there's a second for the first bullet point? Yes. Yeah. So. Have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Authorize all stop on South 11th Street at Forest Avenue. Recommended based on limited site distance and pre pre pedestrian crossing. Requested by Councilman Peter uh, Westenhorn. Is he here? No, sir. These are, again, all consent items as far as staff is concerned. So okay. um, the Councilman is not here. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve. I second. Have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, authorize a 50-foot loading zone on the south side of Broadway in front of 101 Broadway for Acme Feed and Seed. Um, you want to come back to that, Mary? You want... uh, I think we can just discuss it now since we're going through for each one. And I just had some concerns about this because uh, I, I, I'd seen that there, there is a meter out there, but there's also a no parking sign. And so I wanted to hear from staff just some clarification on, uh, it, I guess it was requested, and then are they not able to use the alley in the back for loading? And can you talk a little bit about some of the constraints? Based on the current location, that location is not signed. Originally, they were considering a valet location at that. Now they've come back and requesting a loading zone. They do not have loading off of First Avenue, and they cannot load out of the alley. And that's why we're recommending approval for this zone on Broadway in front of the Acme Feed Store at 101 Broadway. But there's currently a meter there. Is it? Uh, there is not a meter there's there. There's not right on Not on at front? that location, no. 
You're correct. There's a marked spot, it's but marked. the meter's been removed. Okay. Construction, otherwise, I don't know why that, but there is kind of a marked spot with no meter. And so to clean it up, there's a, there's another loading zone right next to it. I can't even think of who that is. But the loading zone adjacent to that is MJM. They have that loading zone. And you're correct. It's it's kind of confusing, if nothing else, right now, because it's marked as if there's a meter, but there's no meter, and there's a no park in the corner sign. So when all this goes down, if approved, we're going to have two loading zones there, the one existing for MJM, the one new one for ACME, and then a no park in the corner sign and no on-street parking in that area. Well, I just I wanted to bring it up just because I'm concerned about uh, public sa or uh, pedestrian safety along that. That's a really wide street to cross, and if there was maybe a bulb out or something as part of these improvements, you know, so that that's a shorter distance to cross because you've got so many that's now going to be going to the new amphitheater and that green space, and I just think that it's much safer to cross then at the three-way than it is one block up where it's a four-way. So, um, and then having an on-street parking there, you know, loading zone, there's not going to be a truck there all the time. It's just going to be occasional. So I wondered if there was maybe a time and that, you know, so that you've got some parking, you know, during parts of the day and that the loading zone is maybe a, at night. And so since right now it's just flat 24 hour loading zone, I just wonder how often they'll um, need it and if that could be looked at just because that on street, you know, sometimes that provides a little uh, barrier. It's nicer to walk on the sidewalk than when you've got that uh, on street parking. Based on their request for that loading zone, they've indicated that they need it seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And they receive regular loads in loads at that location. They tried to use First Avenue, but it was not feasible due to the traffic lane there. Okay, thank you. And I'm, with that said, Diane and I and a couple other people are working on that area as a whole. There's. There's been so many changes and the amphitheater's opening and the ballpark's opening and we're looking at from Union to Demumbrian from 1st to 6th as a, as a big global picture. So as we do all these single items, eventually, hopefully, we're going to come before you with a grand scheme of how we're going to change some things around. With that in mind, what you're thinking right well, now. Well, I know staff has been busy, so we appreciate that. I just wanted to get an update. Thank you. Okay. Quick question. Um, are you, you are looking at putting the meter kiosk downtown on Broadway? It's on the table, yeah. That's one of the thoughts. Um, Cause, uh, parking on Broadway itself is always an issue. You know, we're, we're always talking about that kind of thing. So we've got to make that decision before we can decide what kind of hardware to put down there. We're trying to put some apps in that help our parking. We're trying to um, go with more of a... Um, uh, custom credit card use at meters, that kind of thing is, is in our hopper right now. It's just a little obstacle here and there to get it implemented. So we're working on it. And, and on top of all of that, you have so many musicians <clears throat> that are trying to load and unload in that area too, for ACME as well, and the other clubs around there. So uh, that's always needs to be uh, an important part of the big picture is how they load and unload. Not park there for 30 minutes, but load and unload. Well, that's, enforcement's always the key. We've got one piece of right-of-way and 18 uses for it. It's just, there's going to be some overlap. Looking up from the police side, you talk about the pedestrian safety, but I'm looking at the police side at um, when we don't have a dedicated loading zone, how traffic will back up and they'll back up past the lights, which creates more of a hazard, so an actual dedicated spot or loading zone is something that uh, may be beneficial. I'm glad to hear that Public Works is going to be looking at it in a global picture because it's going to be pushing everything back as we spread more out. Traffic issues will be pushing more back. So It's like, this is it's like water. It's going to go somewhere. I yeah. mean, we just got to find it's a gonna flow. to go. It's going to flow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Do I have a motion? I so move. First. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Remove two parking meters on the east side of 112 2nd Avenue North and authorize a 50-foot loading zone in front of 112 2nd Avenue North from 11 a.m. through 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and from 9 a.m. through 11 p.m. Friday through Saturday. Do I have a motion? So moved. Have a first? I'll second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, this is part of that, isn't it, Chip? <clears throat> uh, 
Doc Holliday's bar has partnered with the tour company and is requesting a loading zone to be used as a designated space to drop off and pick up in that part of that. Yeah, it's ironic. I started adding a little extra information to our consent agenda and it, it's made it a little longer for me. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, do I have a motion? Oh, excuse me. All right, next bullet. Remove 50-foot loading zone at 1325 2nd Avenue North. I mean, 6th Avenue North. This is a correction in the schedule. Signs have already been removed. Uh, do I have a motion? I move. Second. First, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, next bullet. Remove. Parking meters on both sides of 4th Avenue North from 3rd Avenue North to 400 feet west of 3rd Avenue North. Have a motion? That was the one I wanted some clarification on. Okay. Corby, can we see a map of that one? Just a second. We're putting in as part of the redo of the area around the ballpark. That area is becoming two-way traffic, and we, the commission approved that months back. <coughs> well, and it, while we're doing that, we're putting in bike lanes on this section. Well, where bike lanes go, there's no parking. So that's what the gist of it is. But I'll show you where I, it is. I can understand. Yeah, it, the uh, description did just didn't make sense to me. It is. It's where fourth and third meet. And anytime you see where from third to fourth on third, or whatever it says, it, it's kind of odd, but he'll pull it up on Google, it'll make more sense. You have any more questions? All right, it, it'll be to the south of that. Keep going, you're almost there. See where it curves down there, Corby? Behind, is this, under, is this also right in there, zoom in right where your hand is. Oh, is that that curve in the road? Yeah. From, from the intersection to your left to where it curves. See the cars parked there? Yes. We're taking it out not quite that far, Corby, but in that curve back to third is where we're moving okay. the parking. That's behind, behind channel, the tree. That's behind the tree, yeah. Behind the tree. That's behind Channel 5 News and through that row road underpass? Correct, and that's gonna now be bike lanes. Okay. Oh, okay. That's not I, I move Second. this agenda item. Second. Have a first, a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, authorized residential permit parking on the east side of 3rd Avenue North from Harrison to 300 feet north of Harrison Street. The north side of Harrison Street from 3rd Avenue North to 270 feet west of 3rd Avenue North. Uh, the east side of 4th Avenue North from Harrison Street, 225 feet south of Harrison Street. Uh, I, I just had some questions about this because I know it's related to the ballpark. There's residential areas right there <coughs> outside the ballpark. Um, there's also a lot of residential areas as you get into the Germantown area where there's also people parking on the street. So my question is, who's going to enforce this at night when there's a ball game? You know, I come home and I want to park. Who, who's going to be doing the enforcement of this? This is a uh, seems to be a, re a permit zone. Are we looking at other permit parking zones in that area as well? Yeah, it's a um, it's a dynamic process. When this ballpark opens Friday and the next homestand, we'll have a better idea of where the traffic's going to go, but. Right now we're trying to see that condo or whatever they call that to your left, right? I mean to your right, right there, Corby. We're trying to help them out. They're they're on street parking right now, yeah, and we. Condos? I don't know if they're condos or apartments or what, but they're on they're on street parking, and we we're just trying to help them out. When the ballpark has a game, we don't want them to lose their own personal parking, if you will. Although nobody is guaranteed personal parking on street, but that's the idea behind this one. But to answer your question, Germantown might be next. Uh, you never know where the next phone call or study is going to come from. Your area that you're familiar with, we were talking about doing some changes out there to make it more um, universal instead of street to street. 
And again, if Metro Police can um, break in on this, Ms. Favre has, has already brought that up to us before the prior to the meeting, and uh, that's something that Public Works and Germantown are, I guess, going to have some meetings about. Uh, but this will, again, be a traffic plan similar to our Titans traffic plan. Um, the sounds have, have reached out, and they have uh, processed forms through our secondary employment unit. So we will be out there, Metro Police will be out there doing traffic enforcement. Uh, it'll be very similar to the Titans games where we'll have our roving patrols and, and different uses as we're waiting for the game to be over with. So, so officers will be out there ready to address any citizen concerns and, and we'll be out there. Any parking complaints, we'll be out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I move to this item. I have a first. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Remove two parking meters on the west side of 2nd Avenue North, uh, north of uh, Bank Alley. Authorize Valet Lane on the west side of 2nd Avenue North, north of ba Bank Street Alley. Uh, remove all parking both sides of Bank Street Alley from 2nd Avenue North to 3rd Avenue North requested by the 21C Museum uh, Hotel. We can is, take that, is that one item or is that three separate items? Well, they're all related to the same project and if we, I'd like to, if we approve one to approve them all and they are here. Yeah. But I, I, yeah. I'm going to pull something off my own consent list if I can. Okay. We, the requesting party has, the requesting party has asked the third bullet from the top, where it says two parking meters. Mm -hmm. um, there's only three meters in that little section right there. They would like to remove all three meters and make that the passenger loading zone or loading zone. For their hotel. Can we see a map yeah, of this place? The printer's alley. And they're here if you'd like to hear from them, but I mean I think I I know what they're talking about. Okay, so what you're saying is remove three of them well, instead I wanted, of two. And this is kind of a metro legal question since the agenda was posted as two. Can they vote on three? This is a I, I think that they can, um, because I think that is a relatively minor difference. Um, there has been some recent case law that suggests as long as we are a regularly scheduled meeting of a border commission, that there is a little more leeway in terms of um, detail of agenda. Um, uh, and, and in specially called meetings, that is not the case. In specially called meetings, you do have to have the more detailed agenda. But I think that would be okay. Um, the idea of it in concept is usually that you do want to go ahead and have the detailed agenda anyway, just kind of as a courtesy to put people on notice if they're likely to come here and um, have the opportunity um, to, to observe the commission's action on that issue. Um, in this case, though, I, I suspect that anyone who would come to hear about three would probably come to hear about two as well. So I don't think there's probably too much harm done. So we can right. make a motion to uh, amend the agenda. Yes, I think we could. All right, do I have a motion to uh, amend the agenda from two parking meters to three parking meters? So moved. I have a first, second. second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, let's just take all three of these at one. Uh, well, did we want to see the map? I can't remember who asked for the map. Uh, Second Avenue, mm -hmm. Corby. Gosh, it's hard to see. Maybe y'all can see it better than I can, but just above that building with the gray rectangular roof, over to your left, Corby. Up, not up with the map, up with your hand. Down by that green tree. You see the green tree on Second Avenue? No, you're moving the map too much. Go up. See that green tree right, the, right there by where it says Google at the bottom? Now, right there where your hand is, give or take, they're talking about three meters right there between, right there where Corby's grabbing hand is. There's three meters right there on the west side of second up near Union. And we're, take, and we're gonna take those out so there'll be no parking to alley at one end of it. And those cars to your left, that gray SUV will now be a loading zone. 
Okay. Okay. I mean, valet zone. Oh, on street zone? Yeah. Yeah. Go back up. There's a valet lane on the west side of the second. That's where that yeah. car was parked. Yeah. Oh, those three. Okay, my bad. That, these three here. So these three on the left? That's correct. The white van, okay. the red car, and the white car? Yeah. And then where is uh, Bank, Banker's Alley? It's back to your to the it's, south. It's in front of Right there? Right there. Yeah. yeah. And then along here, what are we we're talking about? Right now, it's metro vehicles only that park in the alley. Mm -hmm. We're going to remove those. Plan is to put up some bollards and make it a pedestrian walkway. The pedestrian walkway itself doesn't require a vote, but the removal of the parking does. So okay. turn turn a little bit to the oh, west, Corby, right there. So I mean, they've got big plans for this alley and the hotel and all. If you'd like to hear from them, but the goal is to make it a pedestrian walkway with some outdoor eating, from what I understand, and. Some other things like that. I would where, like to know a little the, bit more about this valet. Oh, I'm so, no, I was just wondering where is the actual hotel going? It's the old Metro Legal Building. Oh, the okay. The old, yeah. okay. Yeah, they goes through. Yeah. Corby, can you show us um, the entrance then to that and the? Go back along a second there. I just was curious about the entrance and how that relates to the valet that's. So you're going to use this existing entrance, or is that all? Yes, okay. so 2nd Avenue will be the entrance, main entrance to the hotel, which will actually be a contemporary art museum on the first floor. And then we're hoping to have the main entrance to our restaurant actually be in Banker's Alley. So we want to create a safe pedestrian pathway to that entrance there. So yes, that the hotel will arrive on 2nd Avenue North, but could access the restaurant through the hotel as well, but the main entrance to the restaurant would be in the alley. So do we need a motion to remove three parking meters, yeah. authorize the valet stand, and remove all parking on both sides of Bank, Bank Street mm -hmm. Alley. I so move. Have a first and a second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> All right, old business. Remove the no left turn on Davidson Road, 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. and from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Chip, is there anything you want to say about that? I think on our, it calls just for Davidson, but it is Davidson Road, it's right? It's Davidson Road, and I think we put this under old business because Commissioner Morin had a question on it. Um, I mean, there's not really much to it. The principal has a no left turn right now into their property, and she would like to have it removed. It's causing some traffic issues, and we're, we're willing to try it. If she's having traffic issues out there, I'd hate to say no, you know. So we're willing to take down the no left turn. It was put up for her in the school in the first place. But without Commissioner Moran here, I don't, it's up to you guys. What's that go into the school? H.G. Hill School, yes, sir. Okay. It's just a time-restricted yeah. left turn when parents are dropping off. Uh, the principal thought it would help them to prohibit left turns now, but instead everybody's going straight and doing U-turns and coming back. <laughs> <laughs> like so, there's always a way to beat the system. So is, yeah. that, is that safer, though? Is that a... I'd rather have left turns than people turning around in driveways and at intersections sure. and coming back. Yeah. Okay. There's no other place to really turn around. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion? What does staff recommend against? The removal of the sign to allow left turns. Not just time. Not just the time res restriction. Well, other than those times, you're allowed to turn left into there anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's just right. an arrival and dismissal of school. Gotcha. I make a motion to uh, <coughs> approve. Have a first. A second. Have a second. All in favor, uh, aye. say aye. Aye. Thank you. Anyone, commissioners, anybody got any questions about anything? Chip, Diane? The commissioners, there were a receipt of the financial report from the Nashville Downtown Partnership, if you have any questions. Chip, 
Chip, I have a question. Uh, several months ago, we had a presentation about cars to go, one of these. I'm just You're curious. reading my mind. Uh, yeah. What's uh, the status of that? I'm just curious where we are. We think within, we think at the May meeting, we're going to have a piece of legislation. If not a piece of legislation, we'll have an update on where we are with the program. But Metro Legal has written some legislation that will have to go through the process and the council and be here for referral. Um, so we're really getting close on the, the project. I think next month we'll have a big update for you. Okay. Thank you. Ballpark opens Friday night. Mm -hmm. Get there early. Say so get early? Get there early. Get there early. What time does it start? I don't know. First pitch, I think, is a little after 7, but Mayor Mike is speaking at 4, I believe. Yeah, 4.30. 4 um, so I'm going to get there for the ceremonial first pitch and the mayor speaking and have a, make a night of it. And the traffic plan is on Metro's website and take plan. the Music City Circuit, right? Okay. <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. The free bus. What, what kind of uh, traffic and parking problems are you expected? Well, the police department's helping us out, so we don't see any problems. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with you then. <laughs> All right, Captain. Move to adjourn. Have a motion to adjourn. Yeah, yeah. Have a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right.